Hi, my name is Jennifer Drake. I'm an assistant professor and I work with the environmental group in the civil department. We're standing in front of the Daniels building and we're going to head upstairs to check out the GRIT lab. So I'm a researcher with the GRIT lab and GRIT is an acronym. It's Green Roof Innovation Testing Laboratory. Um, it's a multidisciplinary team that works in this laboratory. We have landscape architects, we have biologists, and then also engineers. What this lab is looking at are the different design components that go into a green roof and trying to determine how we can optimize green roof systems for stormwater management and also uh, heat island effects or uh, you know cooling in the context of the Toronto climate. In the city of Toronto we have a mandated green roof industry so there's a lot of in, uh, um, a lot of buildings are basically being required because of the green roof bylaw to put them in. But you have a lot of conflicting, um, you have conflicting objectives. Obviously you want to minimize cost and um, engineers tend to take a conservative approach so you use what's been used in the past without maybe modifying it for the conditions that are unique here. So what we're hoping to do here is come up with design guidelines, specifications that are really going to uh, allow us to have infrastructure that's going to maximize its effectiveness in the Toronto scenario. So we have 33 test beds, you can see here. Um, and what the test beds, they have different, um, different design components. So the easiest one you can see obviously is we're looking at different types of plant plantings. So this is the standard. This is um, sedum. And you can see it's a really rubbery plant. They're typically not native. So they're, they're plants that are not native to Ontario. And then we have a meadow blend, which is very different. So it's going to have more native species. Uh, uh, and it's a mix. You can see that there's different kinds of species growing, whereas this is a lot more homogeneous. We are also looking at different substrates. So the right here, this is called FLL. So you can see it's really coarse. Uh, the idea is you want water to be able to infiltrate fast, but then if it's too fast, you don't, uh, you don't have any stormwater ben benefits. So we have the standard FLL, and then we also have uh, find one, I think probably in here, which is a uh, organic, so it's made out of compost, which again can then be sourced more locally than some of the FLL products. We're looking at two different depths. You can't really see that, but we have shallow and a deeper uh, depth. So those have implications in terms of structural loading and cost, but also if you have uh, more depth, you might be able to have more stormwater retention. And then we have different irrigation systems. So you can see here, we have, these are for irrigating, they do drip water. And there's three different irrigation systems. One, nothing, they don't get any water. One, they get watered on a regular interval. And then the other ones you can see here, we have uh, soil moisture controlled. So basically a sensor calls for water when uh, certain dryness uh, conditions have occurred. Each bed is outfitted with um, six temperature sensors so that we can see the vertical profile. So you can see two of them here. Then there's more both inside the bed and then underneath. Uh, these, we've got uh, irometers looking uh, down, which are going to give us sort of an image of the thermal, or not an image, but a reading of the, the surface temperature conditions. And then below, we have tipping buckets to measure the flow of the water as it drains out from underneath the bed. The other sensor that we can't see is in each bed, we have soil moisture sensors, so we can see or measure the moisture of the, of the soil inside the, the, each bed. So we are collecting all of this on five minute intervals, simul like continuously from about May until October 
during the year. This is our first year of data collection. We'll be doing this for two more seasons at least. And um, what we're hoping to see from this are which beds perform better than others in terms of, of stormwater objectives. We also have, like I said, we have a biologist working on this who's looking at biodiversity. Um, and then we have architecture students that are uh, much more trained in uh, landscape design and, and those sort of things. The other small component you can see along here, we have, uh, we're looking at green walls as well. So over by the far side, we have plants that are growing up the walls and then we have temperature sensors behind them. So we can see the benefits thermally of a green wall. And then right above, we have a weather station so that we have really local data on the rainfall, wind conditions, sun, um, and I think that's most of them. So, so that's basically the, the lab. So you can see we still have some empty space left on the roof. So we do have plans to convert this into more lab facilities. Hopefully if we come back next year, uh, we should have constructed a new green roof with solar panels on top. We're going to be looking at how these two green technologies interrelate when they're built in the exact same physical space. We'll be comparing it to solar panel performance over a white roof and we'll be looking at two different heights. So we'll have them at about one foot and then four feet high to see if how we can basically try and maximize energy production and green roof resilience. All of the um, products that are being demonstrated in the GRIT lab have been provided by uh, industrial partners um, as everything from the irrigation system to the media and the plants. So that's all been uh, provided by in-kind services with uh, industrial partners. Um, we also have had, um, there's been a number of grant funding provided to get the research underway, both from the City of Toronto and some other partners as well.